We'll start this thing. Not an ideal situation. Difficult topic. Chemical equilibrium. Now, once you get onto the calculations, we're flying. A few wee definitions to learn at the start. But chemical equilibrium. Generally a nice topic. Chapter 18 of the textbook. So read through that slowly. I'll send on pictures of another textbook and you read through that as well. And I'll forward you on notes. But I'll give you a wee quick summary. If we look at chemical reactions. So say we had magnesium. And we reacted that with oxygen. That reaction goes to completion. Indicated by that arrow. And we form what's known magnesium oxide. It's very difficult to turn that magnesium oxide back into the magnesium or back into the reactants. A, it's very difficult to turn the products back into the reactants. Now, not all reactions go to completion. So there's a very famous example of this. Um, occurs in the production of ammonia and occurs in the, the Haber process. So the Fritz Haber process or the Haber process. Now in this here reaction, we take together our two reactants, say our nitrogen and hydrogen, and we form our product at the end, ammonia. Now already I've, I've done this wrong because technically this reaction does go, doesn't go to completion. That's what's known as a reversible reaction. So say I have my nitrogen, hydrogen, we have an arrow looking like that to form our ammonia. Now we'll balance that up because it is a very famous um, reaction that we do need to learn. So I've got two nitrogens on the left, need two on the right, so we'll have a big two there. And I've got six hydrogens on the right, throw in a three there. So this reaction does, doesn't go to completion. So our nit nitrogen and hydrogen react to form ammonia, but at the same time that ammonia is decomposing to form our nitrogen and hydrogen. So if we take that in a general context, our reactants are forming products, but our products are also decomposing to form our reactants. And this thing here, this arrow here, indicates a reversible reaction. So that'll give us our first definition to learn, one of a reversible reaction. So a reversible reaction, and these will all be in our notes. First of all, reaction is a reaction that can take place in either direction. So in either direction, meaning going to the right, reactants forming products, or our products form reactants. And that's indicated by the arrow like this. Kind of half arrow on each. Now, our nitrogen and hydrogen are continuously reacting to form ammonia while our ammonia is continually decomposing to form our nitrogen and hydrogen and when this state of equilibrium has been reached when the state of balance equilibrium means balance when the state of equilibrium has been reached say up here um, the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction there's no change in the overall amounts so like if i was drawing a graph of that fits in. Say we had our concentration there, our moles per litre. And we had time down here, say in seconds. And I had my reactants. What's going to happen to the concentration of the reactants over time? They're going to decrease because we're forming products. So our concentration of our reactants are going to decrease. Say there's my hydrogen. And I'll just draw the nitrogen a third, roughly a third as high because one is to three is my ratio. And then what's going to happen to my concentration of my products? It's going to increase. Now, once these lines start to flatten out, as we can see here, now I've reached equilibrium. So it looks like there's no reaction occurring, but there is. So it looks like the reaction has ceased because the concentration of the reactants and products stays the same. But inside that, there is a reaction occurring. And this state of equilibrium is known as dynamic equilibrium. Now they often compare dynamic equilibrium, the famous wee example they always say is like a man running on a treadmill. So when a man is running on a treadmill or a woman's running on a treadmill, he's running forward at the same rate as he's running backwards. Or if he's running forward at the same rate as he's running backwards, his position doesn't change. Or a person going down an escalator, 
if the person going down an escalator is going down at the same rate as a person or as the escalator is going up then their position doesn't change so in terms of the reaction here it looks like there's no reaction occurring but there is reactions occurring because the rate of the forward reaction equals the rate of the reverse reaction our reactants are forming products and our products are forming reactants at the same rate so dynamic equilibrium what does that say the reactants are forming products at the same rate as the products at as the same right, it's forming products at the same rate as the products or forming reactants So there are reactions continually occurring. So we'll go through this in our notes and I'll take a picture of your notes as well. And we'll get in then to this thing known as equilibrium constant KC.